What's happening, Crypto Fam? Happy, happy Wednesday. Good morning and welcome back to Love for Crypto. I'm Scott. It's a pleasure to have you here and appreciate taking the time out to consume the content. So, thank you. Today, we're talking about cash, fiat money being replaced by digital assets. Um, the banking system possibly being replaced by the likes of Ripple and other decentralized systems. Stick your centralized private system up your um, yeah we want transparency baby let's get into it so i mean like <clears throat> excuse me up to seven well seven months ago a year ago deutsche bank and other people have been saying that crypto will eventually replace fiat it's just a matter of time so what's the difference between fiat cash and a CBDC. Well, the CBDC in open markets, it's going to be the people putting the value on it as well as governments. The UK government and the Bank of England put the value on the pound and they say it's one pound and then they dictate all, um, all the prices within our economy are based around the one pound. <clears throat> But then internationally, the pound is subject to order books against other countries and fluctuates in value to them other countries. But the pound is always the pound in the UK. That's just a unit of credit. It's not an actual currency. It's not intrinsic. It's a piece of paper. Yeah, There's an IOU that can no longer be paid out. Back in the day, it could have been paid out. Now it can't. If you don't believe me, take a £20 note to the Bank of England and ask them for your commodity. The note says the Bank of England promises to pay the bearer the sum of £20. That £20 note is not £20. It's an IOU for £20. You want the actual £20. £20 of a CBDC will be 20 actual pounds. Not a fucking IOU that says you've got 20 quid of the bank's commodities. So, fiat money is a currency established as money, often by government regulation, but does not have intrinsic value. Fiat money does not have, excuse me, does not have used value and has value only because a government maintains its value or because parties engaging in its exchange agree on its value. So, the government maintains its value in your walls, and the parties engaging in exchange value international. And they're agreeing and min the influence in the value, aren't they? The global value, so we say. So, a recent unveiled Deutsche Bank Imagine 2030 report boldly puts a date on the eventual fiat crypto social consensus flip. Citing the Asian continent, in particular China, to have already recognised the trend, if true, then the cryptocurrency speculator and investor would like to know is, when will it happen? The current landscape is a predictor of the future. So, the classification of crypto by Deutsche Bank includes central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs, which is worth keeping in mind while results are discussed. A CBDC pound is no longer a fiat money. It's a digital asset. Get that in your head, guys. At the moment, we are, we've got cash and we've got fiat money, not intrinsic. When it flips to CBDCs, we have got actual assets and value it's different the report concludes the next step to avoid falling behind in the world's economy will be a result of the fiat crypto flip the concept while interesting still comes with its flaws such as the fact that global adoption government acceptance and massive leaps and bounds in cybersecurity technology would need to occur in order to even consider replacing traditional fiat with centralized or decentralized crypto assets Talk about centralised crypto assets, mate. You can stick them up your ass as well. Stick them up your ass. Stick the feet up your ass, and stick anything that's centralised and private 
up your ass. I don't like it, mate. I don't like it. Say what you want about privacy coins. I don't like it. Joey Wells wants privacy. Pedophiles. I don't fucking like it. Right? It's that simple. Dude, that, it's nothing beyond that. Nothing beyond... I don't care if, if you don't want you, you, your fucking details out in the open. I do. I've got a nephew who don't want to end up in the hands of the people who got Madeline McCann and all the rest of it. Right? So, I'm sorry, but you can stick your fucking privacy up your ass. I want security. Right? And I'll take heads off to fucking get it, mate. I'm not joking. <laughs> Back to the article. <laughs> If a CBDC currency from a major country turns out to be successful and the centralised strategy is implemented by other countries, most of these investors and traders will likely begin to look at its direction. All this movement is likely to drastically affect the blockchain industry but may not necessarily drive mass adoption in the direction of decentralised currencies. What that means is if we want centralization and what keeps centralization, we'll do everything in our power to make sure the media makes the masses still want privacy and centralization. On the heels of Chinese President Jinping, Jin Jinping, Jin Jinping, Jin Jinping's announcement regarding the government's interest in blockchain tech, the country has made clear. It's strong efforts to implement feasible plans that ensure individuals and businesses can make national and international transactions using this fast-growing technology. However, the idea is not to trigger Chinese crypto enthusiasts to invest more in Bitcoin and any other decentralized currencies with an immutable ledger, but rather to mirror a more centralized focus in the direction of the People's Bank of China, or PBOC, which plans to launch the world's first national crypto currency. We know it's already in testing. It launched, mate. Launched. I said at the beginning, it's pretty old. Launched. The plan has been in motion for some years. Complete prototype according to the local officials and the government support over the years. Pace development can increase scale and the creation and testing of its national currency to become part of the closed Chinese system. Closed Chinese system. You're going to need a bridge asset to that, bruh. You're going to need a bridge asset to that, bruh. <laughs> With the Chinese government taking initiative by introducing their crypto yuan early next year, we will most likely see other countries following suit. Countries like China, South Korea and Japan will most likely see a quick transition into crypto-based payment system because of their existing infrastructures and developed culture in accepting digital payments as the norm. As opposed to using cash for payments, it also gives the government full autonomy. I love the way they start acting like we, we, we lose, use cash everywhere we go. We do really use cash everywhere we go. Do we? No, no. Why are you necky? Why are you necky? The majority of people in the UK who want to use cash are either over 50, yeah, over 50, buying illegal drugs or tax dodging, earning money you're not declaring. They're the three reasons you want. The three main reasons you want cash. You're either just getting old and don't want to really bother about this new system. You'd rather still just use cash till you die. You, 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 you're buying drugs because the drug dealer don't declare his money. He wants cash. can't want to send him in PayPal. Or you, 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 you're working for earnings that you're not declaring and you want it in cash. Or... That, that's the only reason. Otherwise, we're ready for it. We're ready for it. We've made don't start talking to me like China systems faster than RTGS or UK. Shut up. <laughs> it's like you can't get much faster than instant, guys. You know what I mean? Instant settlement. You don't get much faster than that. We're ready. There's just some people fighting it. There are people fighting it. At the end of the day, they're coming. So we're assuming the 2030 day decentralized mass adoption will lag. Theoretically, what would need to happen for the Chinese CBDC to take over as a national fee and eliminate the necessity for the original yuan to exist? In short, a government would have to rid their nation of yuan, giving citizens access and resources needed to utilize a new digital currency thus by eventually onboarding their citizens the blockchain would gain billions of users so assuming deutsche bank is correct in projecting this to happen by 2030 
The transition merely adds a pool of blockchain users which are one step closer to adopting decentralized currencies. Currencies will drastically change in the next 10 years. Make no mistake of it. And so will banking. Now, Ripple could, could replace, excuse me, the banking system. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean they will. <clears throat> Leading financial think tank Ripple could replace the banking system. An association of leading experts in the financial industry describes in a new report that XRP has all the features to replace traditional banking. I'm saying they're going to replace central banks, traditional commercial banking, your correspondent banking, your slow, sluggy, shit old banking. It's going to replace it, mate. Ripple's technology is mature and superior to traditional money transfers and other services. Ripple offers businesses of all sizes the ability to quickly and cost-effectively process transactions across borders in real time using smart remittance technologies. Ripple already cooperates with well-known payment service providers such as MoneyGram and the largest European bank, Santander. Santander Bank, baby! A new report states that Ripple technologies are ahead of the current technology status of banks worldwide and could serve as a model for a central bank-supported digital currency, also known as a CBDC. Hmm. Ripple payment system could serve as a model for CBDCs. An independent panel of financial industry leaders, the group of 30, is calling on central banks and regulators around the world to step up regulation and research into CBDCs, as China's digital yuan is the most advanced. A new report by the group of 30 sees great potential in Ripple for central banks to use a CBDC of their own as a model. It is possible that such a stable coin could be valuable for cross-border payments, serving a function similar to that offered a real set to buy Ripple, real-time growth salmon system, currency exchange and remiss network, whose digital currency XRP leapfrogs, slow and expensive correspondent banking. We covered that yesterday. If you didn't go check it out, you know the dance. Although the mention of Ripple is a positive sign, the report concludes that it would be naive, I said naive then, naive to believe that a cryptocurrency could eventually replace the current government and central bank driven monetary system. The report concludes that it would be naive to believe that cryptocurrency could eventually replace the current government and central bank driven monetary system. You know, not going to change it. Uh -huh. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Tell them they're never going to get rid of the gold standard. And you'll have some of them, oh, shut the fuck up, you dickhead. Talking about how we have money that's worth nothing. You fucking dickhead. And you're going to have money that's worth nothing. And you're going to have money that's Yeah, exactly. You dickhead. You don't understand it, so sit down and shut the fuck up and let's show you this new system that's going to absolutely annihilate your system. Bruh. <clears throat> the libertarian view that a superior private sector currency, such as a cryptocurrency, could somehow supplant a government currency is utterly naive. The long history of currency shows that while the private sector may innovate, in due time the government regulates and appropriates currency competition between the private sector and the public sector is never a level playing field. Okay, slice his fucking throat. Slice his throat. And let's ask the next guy. Seriously. You talk, let's get the fucking... Guillotine out. Who do you think you are? Who, who do you think you are telling me I'm naive? When I run the fucking government, we run the fucking government, my next door neighbour and every other fucker who puts that fucking X on a piece of paper is their fucking boss. So have that right. They ain't our boss, we're theirs. So who the fuck do you think they are telling us that we, that we, that we, that we can't have a system that we want? Get fucked, you cheeky bastards. Cheeky, cheeky motherfuckers. I'm telling you now, we will war 
for a level playing field if we have to by 2030. We will fucking war. They do it or we do it. Vote Scott 2030. I'm fucking playing. I'm not. For, they've got 10 years to sort it out, mate, or I'm, I'm ready to take heads off. Slice his fucking throat and see if his missus, see she's happy about the way he lived his life. Eh? And then go and ask his fucking cousin and his mate and his colleague and his brother and his best friend if they want to live the same as that fucking knobhead did. And if they do, slice their fucking throats too. <laughs> Pedophiles and fucking rapists running the country, mate. You having a fucking laugh telling me how to live. Telling me we'll never have a level playing field. I tell you what, I take your head off and we've got a level playing field, mate. Shut the... Anyway, the panel got... I mean, this is about what we covered yesterday. This is what it's caused now. And, it, and literally, because the group of 30 have acknowledged that they're going to get absolutely annihilated off this new currency if they don't sort the fucking necks out, they're shitting it. They're legitimately shitting it. And they use the media on the mainstream to throw the foot out, wear your fucking masks, get fucking scared. You... I want them to understand why they need us. Remember that film, FIFA Vendetta, 2020? That's what it is. They need to understand that they need to be ruled. They need to understand that fear is all they're worth. Horrible bastard. They need to remember why they need us. No, I got that passionate about that then. I think I nearly broke my little finger on my knee. Don't hit your kneecap with a tender bit of your hand. I'm a fist in your kneecap. Not a good idea, that, mate. <laughs> the panel goes on to say that regulators are too timid in enticing new legislation and the public sector must ensure that the basic infrastructure is in place to launch a new payment processing innovation. Currently, Facebook is... Facebook stalking ahead with Libra and developments from the ECB to research a digital euro are so far inadequate, according to some experts. Cryptocurrencies contribute to adoption. According to the report, all efforts will initially be associated with efficiency problems and high coordination costs at the outset, but the private sector and current developments in the crypto market can help. Hmm... Find a unified international regulatory framework that supports innovation and is not stifled by lack of overregulation. Fucking hell, man, it hurt that. It hurt. Given the challenges the euro has faced and the difficulty of having transnational money without a transnational fiscal and regulatory authority, and what the fucking hell the IMF do? Transnational fiscal and regulatory. What the fucking hell are the IMF, mate? You haven't got a transnational authority. Who the fuck are the International Monetary Fund? What the fuck are What's their job? The World Bank. The, what the fuck's their job? You talk about what the fuck? Honest, real talk there. Right, real question. Like, what the fuck? You without a transnational fiscal regulatory, what are you talking about? We've got the IMF, SDR basket, we've fucking got it, what are you talking about? I want them to understand that they need us. That's what that fucking is. Lies and all this shit. Masking. It is difficult at this point to see how a global currency could evolve digitally when it has not yet happened with the existing system. Nevertheless, the externalities pose. Get me in the IMF meeting in November and let, let's just sort out the SDR basket and take the XDR, excuse me, the XDR and call it the UN credit. The UN credit, global fucking credit, one of them, global credit. All I want, all I want to know then is how many XRP is it? Yeah, how many XRP is one UN credit? And how many pounds is one UN credit? That's all I want to know. So, how many pounds is a UN credit? And then we're on the way. You've got your international, transnational money, 
with your transnational fiscal regulatory authority in the INF. So what you talking about, me? What you to? Oh my days! This is where we get. I mean, links in the description, y'all. Well, I will read them myself. And I mean, this is this is what happens. This is why this motherfucker and even put his name on on the art. Oh, it's a lie, Colin Brown. Hi, uh, Colin. Don't like that last paragraph, mate. Got to be honest. Mm. Colin is a Bitcoin investor of the early hour and a long time trader in the crypto and forex market. He's fascinated by the complex possibilities of blockchain technology and tries to make matters accessible. Well, he should be fucking rich already, eh? Surely he's rich already if he was an early hour investor in Bitcoin and a long time trader in crypto and forex. He's made it. Why he's still writing for fucking crypto news, flash dot com. <laughs> Hey, hey, I can't, I'm a shit writer, mate. I ain't got no articles online. Well done, Colin. I ain't ripping you, mate. Just, I'm ripping your trading fucking skills. <laughs> I'm questioning your trading skills, mate. We're not ripping, we're not bullies here. We don't like bullies. It's banter, mate. It's banter. Call me, just, just call me a knobhead, a dickhead, your weapon, muppet. It's banter, then. Don't go in the corner and cry, mate, because you turn me into a buller. <laughs> so, is it really any question of digital assets replacing fiat currencies? I don't think there is. When you really question yourself and you sit there and you ask, what is a fiat currency? Where is it getting its value from? Now it gets its international, like its transnational value is from the exchanges and audible. It's forex value. Inside the UK borders, it's just a quid. It's just a quid, mate. It's just a quid. You've got a nugget there. You've got a nugget there, Jimmy. You've got a quid. You've got a quid, mate. You've got a quid. Don't change value in our borders. The, the, the products inflate. Products inflate, but pound is just a pound. Is it not? And I want people to remember when I say ripple, could could replace commercial banks correspondent it's already replacing correspondent banking in the remittance sector so don't come in the comments and tell me that i'm fucking wrong because i'm not wrong ripple could replace banks they could doesn't mean they're going to doesn't mean they're going to replace every single bank in the fucking world so just accept that it's already faster than correspondent banking and if correspondent banking doesn't catch up that's basically all it means it will take over what swift and sepa do because it's faster than them i don't know how much more we have to say and i don't know how much more evidence we need that it's 2025 to 2030 is the big is where, where it's happening big. And, and, and I have said we are going to see some movement and gains before then. I've got no doubt running up to 2023 and beyond. But 2025 and beyond is the true, true big gains. Seriously. I don't think... I think there's just... I try and guess percentages at times and I'm like... I'd go as far as to say like 25% of the crypto community actually have the longevity needed to fully see this through to maturity. And all I mean is, imagine you was investing in the internet in 1998, you bought some Google stock, you bought some Amazon stock. You bought um, some Apple stock, some Microsoft stock and stuff like that. And bitch, bash, bosh. It was like, yo, so you bought Bitcoin, Ethereum and fucking Litecoin early on. And then you just sit and wait. And you, you, you made a nice butter by 2005. By 2005, you're like, yo, a nice little butter here. Your 2010 comes 10 years later, you're like, yo, we've made a nice little bit there. But some other guy comes along and's like, yo, you're the guys who invested in fucking Microsoft and Amazon and Apple in the 90s. And you're like, yeah, mate, mate, millions. 
Made fucking millions, mate. And this kid's like, oh, oh yeah, nice. Well, we, we did, um, we invested in Facebook, YouTube, Tesla, Instagram, WhatsApp, Snapchat, all this, that, but, but. We made billions. The guy's like, what? You made billions? After us? We thought it was over. We thought it was basically over, mate. Ah, uh, that is 2025, mate. Trust me. If everyone's going to be like, oh, you buy Bitcoin, you buy this, you buy that, you're on VChain, you're on Chainlink, you're on this, you're on that. By 2025, not realising that the big fucking gains come by 2030. Seriously. It is. Um, it will be a massive eye-opener for some as, as, we, as we start approaching it. And I'm telling you, that's why you invest in internet of value as a whole and yourself. You live long and oddle it until you're ready to let it go. You diversify your profile. Don't put all your value into one asset because you are limiting yourself way too much if you do that. Seriously, um, diversify. Turn hobbies into revenue too. Um, <clears throat> doing a video on Friday. Going live Friday, DLT con, gonna be outside the hotel and then we're driving down to Northampton for the meet, so I'll be live uh, at a certain point in the morning before I set off. And then I will um, pick it back up at the meet. I might go live at the meet on Saturday. So if you can't come, stay tuned for that. And if you can come, excuse me, I'll see you there. Wishing health and happiness to you and yours. Take, take care guys. If you're back in work and you're grinding away, you're halfway through. Yeah, you're halfway, halfway through today and you're halfway through the week, mate. Keep grinding. Won't last forever. We'll have our day in the sun soon. Yeah. We love crypto. We love XRP. And we love you. Yeah. See you on the next one. Peace.